regarding wrapping permits, is that correct? Yes, sir. Come on.
Mr. Chairman, the budget committee recommends the approval of the tax transfers and amendments and waives the reading of the same for the school system. motion to approve. Mr. Vassar, we have a second. Mr. Langman. Any questions? If not, roll call, please. Amy Ford? Yes. Bill Miller? Yes. Heather Blazer? Yes. Jason McMahon? Yes. Norman Smith? Yes. Tracy Stepp? Yes. Norman Templin? Yes. Jeff Besslinger? Yes. Dan Brock? Yes. Michael Laval? Yes. Rick Vassar? Yes. David Berlow? Yes. Tim Lehman? Yes. Bill Yates? Yes. Mr. Chairman, the budget committee recommends the approval of the attached health department salary. Do you have a motion to approve? Mr. Pastor, seconded by Mr. Lehman again. Any questions? If not, roll call again, please. Amy Ford? Yes. Bill Miller? Yes. Gail Blazer? Yes. Jason McMahon? Yes. Norman Smith? Yes. Tracy Stepps? Yes. Jonathan Timlin? Yes. Jeff Besslinger? Yes. Dan Brock? Yes. Will Laval? Yes. Greg Baxter? Yes. David Baradol? Yes. Tim Lehman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anything for sanitation? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Farrell, his term on the land field committee has ended. Maybe we want to thank you for your time spent. But his post will be taken up by Mr. Esslinger. Okay. Is that something you <coughs> Is that, how's that going to work? Uh, well, well, if you want, what we can do is add it to the agenda for next month, and uh, we can you can go month, month to month until next month, and we can put you on there with your full on the agenda with your uh, full term and everything officially. That, that's okay with you, Mr. So it'll be on next month's agenda. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? No. All right. Uh, anything from Jim? I'm going to ask that you call a meeting next month concerning the partnership. And I would like to invite, I would like the uh, chairman of the Economic Development Board to be present and the chairman of the uh, Partnership Board. Okay, is that fine? Yes, sir, that's fine. Say, say that again, yes, sir. I, I need to speak for you. I'm asking to call a meeting concerning the partnership next, for next month in the Bureau Committee. I'd like the chairman of the, um, of the Economic Development Board and the Partnership Board to be present. So, nothing else, uh, public safety? Uh, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen, the uh, public safety did meet uh, and it was recommended by the public safety that we have another meeting to uh, go over uh, some literature that uh, was given to us to go over. So, uh, we will call another public safety meeting real soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, purchasing nothing? Okay. <coughs> I have a report from the county mayor. Is there anyone here from the, the UT extension, sir? Come on up. Uh, as you may know, uh, may or may not know, the month of March has been the, is going to be proclaimed as the UT extension month. Uh, and Sarah is our extension director for the University of Tennessee. She does an outstanding job. She was with us uh, this past uh, a few days ago when we got a meeting from the Commissioner of the Department of Agriculture. She was instrumental in that meeting, and uh, I don't think many of us can tell, I recommend anybody that gets a chance to come down and talk to her about what all she does and the, and the good and the services that they provide to the agricultural base here in the county. As we know, agriculture is one of our key, is one of the keystones of our economy here in Pike County. And it's also part of our heritage in Pike County. So not many things hit on the economics and the cultural together. And you are doing an outstanding job of, of upholding that, promoting that. And uh, I would just like to read this proclamation for you, and then you'll be welcome to say some, uh, speak to the board. Whereas the University of Tennessee is a Tennessee land grant university, and has three-part mission of teaching, research, and, ex and extensions. And our extension is the outreach arm of the University of Tennessee an annual part of the land grant mission extending the knowledge and expertise of the university to the people of Tennessee through education delivered by agents, specialists, volunteers in all 95 counties in the state. And whereas, the extension is a valuable resource for helping citizens to solve problems, proving real life solutions, or providing real life solutions 
and in the places they live, work, play, and through hundreds of programs, and whereas the Extension's efforts are based on local needs, research, and commitment to improve the quality of life for citizens, and whereas the Extension's educational programs <clears throat> and the 4 a youth, youth development, agriculture and natural resources, family and consumer science, and community economic development produce substantial returns to the state, and whereas using research, questionnaires, observations, and sales records, and economic impact is estimated at more than $553 million for statewide education programs, whereas a recent assessment indicated that for every dollar in public funds invested in extension programs, it returns an estimated $8.29 to the people of Tennessee. Now for, on behalf of Cock County, Tennessee, I, Rob Mathis, Mayor of Cock County, do right here proclaim the month of March as UT Extension Month. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, board, I will now turn over the floor to Sarah, our director of UT Extension. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. First of all, let me say thank you to everyone. Thank you to the PLB members for allowing us the opportunity to give you a quick update on what we do in Extension. Um, Mayor Mike has shared quite a bit in that proclamation, but let me extend first and foremost our thank you for your support um, because the county does fund a portion of our work here. I wanted to take this opportunity to share real briefly a little bit more in detail about what we do here on a local level. So that proclamation is statewide. In Clark County alone, our return, our economic impact for every $1 invested in UT Extension here, the return in this county is $32 um, here in Clark County. So our mission is to help Tennesseans improve their quality of life and solve problems through the application of research and evidence-based knowledge in the areas of agriculture, which is what we're most commonly known for. But we also have the areas of family and consumer sciences and also for a chief development. Our office's goal is to help improve the lives of the citizens in this county by providing them with real life solutions. Um, so real briefly, I'll highlight a couple of quick programs that we do that you all may be aware of or maybe not. Um, on the ag side, we have the Garden of Eden Community Teaching Garden. Um, that is a partnership with the Health Department, C5, and many other um, community organizations. We partnered about two years ago to write a $30,000 grant, a Project Diabetes grant, and establish that garden on Housing Authority land. It, there are 10 raised beds open to anyone. So anyone in this room is more than welcome to go and take part at the Garden of Eden. Um, last year alone, we donated hundreds of pounds of produce to those in need in our community, which we think is very important, promoting food security and providing access for um, youth and adults to learn where their food comes from. And um, like I said, it is for everyone. So if you have not seen the Garden of Eden, please, by all means, it's located right next to the Boys and Girls Club. Go check it out, walk through it, take some produce home later on this summer. Um, it's there for everyone. On the family and consumer science side, we have the mobile teaching kitchen. Some of y'all may have seen it sitting in the <coughs> Uh, parking lot of the annex. It's our little trailer that we take all around the county. Thanks, the Sheriff's Department, for the truck for able to do that. Um, but we take it all around the county doing food and nutrition demonstrations. And we think that's really important because we're a rural county and not everyone's able to make it to Newport to the city center to be able to learn those very important things. So we take that mobile teaching kitchen out to our local libraries and out into those farther reaching communities to be able to bring our knowledge and our education to those people where they live each and every day. And finally, I'll round out with our 4-H youth development, the other key <coughs> thing that we're probably most known for. Um, we just sent um, a high school sophomore, Miss Jenna, to State 4-H Congress where she learned all about what everyone sitting in this room does. Um, she spent some time with the House of Representatives, with the State Senate, talking with our local um, state legislatures, um, and really learned all about that. And you're probably wondering who this young lady is right here. She's going to highlight, um, first she's going to tell you who she is, and then she's going to highlight one of the other 4-H programs that's pretty renowned in our county as well. Just recently, we went to Alabama Southeastern Livestock Expo, 
where me and my team came first in our division, as well as I came first in, in the junior high division of the last century. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Creek Baxter? 
Yes. David Barabal? No. Tim Lyman? No. Billy Heads? So that motion failed. Um, anything else in the county commission? Sir? Uh, I do want to uh, let everyone know that um, we uh, sent the uh, litter crew out to pick up a dump site. Um, and not only did the litter crew go, but Ben Hicks sent his people plus equipment to help get it up. And uh, I'll make this quick. They picked up 35,000 pounds of trash and 59 tires, most of the trash being closed. It was a homeless encampment. Six truckloads. Um, Six truckloads. I just think we're just talking to me and I don't do my hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the word. Uh, anything else? Uh, in a matter of report for Cock County Partnership. So last month I was asked to look into uh, getting everything prepared for 411 dropping. Uh, do you pass those around? Um, so I'll give you a report on that. Uh, Randall Freeman has finished the survey work on uh, getting the properties divided up on the right and left hand side of the road. I suppose there that um, the price of that is $1,805. Um, we've got the survey to work. In addition, uh, we have received, we've received back uh, three different quotes on the property. Um, now that was reflected of the assumed that it was 12 acres out of the right of ways and the variances were cut out of that. The actual acres came back uh, about nine, like six acres, I think. So I just saw that we just cut out a little bit longer. 9.56. 9 um, so I will have to add those uh, those quotes to buys and bring them back to you again so everyone's working out the same sheet of music. But just so you're aware, uh, the price came back anywhere from $3,600 an acre, um, $3,600 to $3,800 an acre, and uh, that was an all in price of $52,000 that was based on uh, 12 acres. That was just so you look at your land up to the ground. Yeah, it'll come down a little less than that. So just to be fair for everybody, I'm going to take it back. Uh, and give them copies of the uh, survey now that's come back. It's going to be very popular. Do I own the highway? Do I own the highway? Yeah, on both sides. So, the Are you checking the price on the cost? The price, I've left up measures for the written and uh, Dave Britton over in Morristown and uh, another gentleman from Stephen Austin. Um, Dave has not got back on anything written yet, but generally those are about $2,000 and $2,000. Um, so that was the only surprise that we got on it is that uh, there is a blue line stream on the property called Seahorn Creek. I did not realize that, but it does show up on the when the, uh, the rail out the place it was very water. So we're going to look and see what options are that can be an issue. Um, but I'm going to have uh, some civil engineers go out there and do it with the session on the Do you know if there's any
slow it down. You're going to have any kind of uh, rest stop or, or uh, service station sometime during your PSL. Will that bring the appraisal down on it? Good. Good. Um, I will have that discussion with David and have him. I just didn't know how close that, I mean, maybe it feels on the same bill, too. I mean, the acreage between that. If they could build that side of that thousand, you know. It's actually 1500. I thought we just lowered it down. Did we not lower it? No. Or did we lower it? It was 2000 at one time. And we lowered it. And years ago, we lowered it to 10,000, I believe. We lowered it on the first time I came in, which was the last we had. We had um, we had a uh, somebody who was sued in the county over and I'm thinking it was it fifteen or a thousand. I thought we took it down to a thousand when Brittany was No, they're trying to take it down more again after that, but it failed. Okay. So it was fifteen. I know we had to take it down to fifteen. Okay. Anything else for us? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in a matter of reports from priority ambulance service, that copy is enclosed. <coughs> in a matter of reports from Keith County kind of Beautiful, that copy is enclosed. And that's from the partnership on the county, county corrections, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, new business. Uh, there was an amendment to the new business. So the first thing uh, that we're going to discuss and vote on is the matter of issuing a RAP permit for RAP code 1. That's number one, and in a matter of issuing a RAP permit to RAP code two. Uh, first one, DBA River and Whitewater, and DBA wrapping in the Smoky. So we have a motion to approve those permits. Mr. Hudson, second, Mr. Lane. Any questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carried. Um, In a matter, there's also a new business under item A. In a matter of appointing three open seats on the solid waste board, the terms will expire March 24th. David Bernal, Gary Carver, Casey Gillum, and the city seat nominee to be determined by the city council meeting on Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. Yeah, I think it was. So. Uh, I'm a little confused here what we're asking for. Are we are we wanting to change these seats to four seats now instead of three? Or how are we want to do that? How, how's this? The, the, uh, yeah, the amended one there, uh, I, don't, I think we're still doing the three. Okay. Uh, we're still doing the three on. Uh, my understanding is, it's not, I could be, could be mistaken, but my understanding is we have three plus the one from the, the city. So it'll be four. Okay. That, that's my understanding. Yeah. I Hey, what, what is the purpose of this board? I understand they've not met since we've been in office. So what? Well, they meet once a year, and basically what they do, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they give the state the recycling numbers, solid waste numbers. Right. The state asks for a report every year, and they, they're the ones that, that vote and submit that report. Uh, basically, that's it. Just for the record, I talked to Mr. Gillum, and he wanted it know on the record that he has to be taken off this board as soon as his term was over with. Okay. From the CLB the last last time he was on. So, just for the record, I wanted to put that out there so we need to know that. Okay. It's not that he didn't want to attend the meeting. He he has to be promoted. Okay. Later. Sir, I just want to say that this this board has to ensure that we meet the twenty five percent in recycling um, as opposed to what we're throwing away in trash and that helps us try to get grants. Yeah. So uh, again, a little bit confused here. Uh, we got one on no. these these oh. seats have traditionally been members of the CLB. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason it's left open is to see if there's anyone in the city we want to serve that. Uh, there I think you can have one of the two of these have to be one of them does not have to be you can have a somebody else on there if you don't want to go to the CLB uh, or if you don't want to do all three CLB members then uh, you can open the four for non 
foundations. All right, so Mr. let's do it this way. So Mr. Gillum is no longer no longer wants to be served. That's is that correct, Mr. Man? Exactly. So we still have David Verdon. Gary Carter is still willing to serve. Yes. Okay. Does anybody from this board also want to serve on this committee? Again, they meet once a year. Well, I would suggest we find somebody at large. If <coughs> Mr. Chairman, yes. I'm chairman of the landfill committee. I'll volunteer to serve on the waste board. All right. Mr. Tiffin has volunteered. So we have a motion to appoint him to this board. Mr. McMahon, second by Mr. S. Langer. <laughs> First one speaks, always in trouble. All right. For those who want to, to appoint Jonathan in case of in place of Casey Gillum, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Now we're going to vote for Jonathan, uh, David Veridov, Gary Carver, and uh, Miss Ottinger. Yes. Yeah, they just rolled her back on it. And Miss Ottinger to this board. Do we have a motion to approve? Mr. Layman, second by Mr. Hudson. Any questions? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? That motion carried. Uh, moving on. Um, B, in the matter of Cock County Emergency Management AC Director Joe Esway addressing the board regarding his fifth year of service. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're moving pretty well. So I'm going to keep it as succinct as I can. It was exactly five years ago today that I sat in the front row of this meeting to be confirmed in my appointment <coughs> to this post. I had little more than a clue as to what lay ahead of me, uh, but armed with my wit and determination at the ground running the following Monday, I remember calling Mayor Ottinger in my third month and over the phone and saying, hey, you remember that interview that we had three months ago? She said yes, and I said, there's a lot of stuff you left out. And, uh, so we had a good laugh about that. For some time, I planned to stand before you on this day and give you a state of the agency address, tout our success, and kind of take a little bit of a victory lap in everything that we've accomplished, but as time grew closer, that idea seemed less attractive to me. Instead, I decided that in recognition of my fifth year of service, I would choose five people who have helped me learn grow, develop, and succeed in this job. These five, representing very different aspects of Cock County life, have been at my side from day one, and without question, are the reason we have come as far as we have. Without them, I am still searching for answers and solutions to some of our toughest problems. Certificate, certificate of Commendation, the Director takes pleasure in commending Casey Kelly for exceptional and noteworthy performance of duty while serving the citizens of Cobb County through thoughtful leadership, sound counsel, spirit and cooperation from 25 March 2019 to 18 March 2024. During this period, Mr. Kelly has performed in an exemplary manner as consistently going well above and far beyond the call of duty. Whether it was the alignment of basic emergency operation planning, a global pandemic, countless natural or man-made disasters and everything in between. When the director wasn't sure how to solve a problem, Mr. Kelly was his first phone call. And with sound counsel and a servant's heart, Casey was always there. Casey is a problem solver in the truest sense and has amassed the network and experience to solve any problem we have. The partnership that is forged between Cobb County Schools and the Emergency Management Agency has become a model of coordination and efficiency that other counties are emulating. Director Esway extends his eternal thanks for all that has been accomplished together and by your hand, signed on this day and in this place. <laughs> Certificate of Commendation, the Director takes pleasure in commending Lieutenant Cody Keyes 
for exceptional, noteworthy performance of duty while serving the citizens of Cobb County through thoughtful leadership, sound counsel, spirit, and cooperation from 25 March 2019 to 18 March 2024. During this period, Lieutenant Keyes has performed in an exemplary manner, manner consistently going well above and far beyond the call of duty. Designated as the project manager for all things emergency management, Lieutenant Keyes defines fiscal management and responsibility. He has saved the taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars, and it is no stretch to say that every single piece of equipment under the badge of emergency management is mission capable because of him. Lieutenant Keyes possesses a combined vision and skill set like no other. He is able to look what most would consider junk and work through the mechanical and cosmetic issues to transform a piece of equipment into a life-saving apparatus capable of accomplishing a wide range of missions to preserve life, property, and agriculture. Trucks, trailers, all-train vehicles, the Hummer, and the jet boat are credited with more lives saved than can be counted. Lieutenant Keyes' hard work and dedication reflect great credit upon himself, his family, and the fire service. <clears throat> Certificate of Commendation, the director takes pleasure in commending Captain Walter Cross, Jr. for exemplary noteworthy performance of duty while serving the citizens of Cock County through thoughtful leadership, sound counsel, Spirit of Cooperation from 25 March 2019 to 18 March 2024. During this period, Captain Cross has performed in an exemplary manner, consistently going well above and far beyond the call of duty. One of the original architects in the conceptualization, planning, and certification of Cobb County's first ever swift water rescue team, Captain Cross's experience, thoughtful leadership, and command presence has contributed in calculable measure to one of the most active and well-respected water rescue teams in the state. Men. <coughs> Men, women, and children of Cock County, as well as those visiting from across our borders have been given a second chance at life because of his vision and steadfast commitment to excellence. Make no mistake, without Captain Cross, there is no Cock County Swift Water Rescue Team. Captain Cross's actions. Yeah. Captain Cross that stood at my side the entire time, so yeah. Certificate of Commendation, the Director takes pleasure in commending Ms. Rita Karen Chambers for exceptional noteworthy performance of duty while serving the citizens of Cock County through thoughtful leadership, sound counsel, spirit, and cooperation from 25 March 2019 to 18 March 2024. During this period, Ms. Chambers has performed in an exemplary manner consistently going well above and far beyond the call of duty. Promoted two years ago to the post of Chief River Safety Officer, Ms. Chambers has transformed the River Safety Division of Cobb County's Emergency Management, partly responsible for a half a million dollars in county revenue each year. Ms. Chambers has recruited, trained, and employed a team of part-time seasonal River Safety Officers and hit the ground running. Ms. Chambers has taken it upon herself to create an environment of trust and cooperation between the rafting companies, bus drivers, private boaters, and Duke Energy that has increased efficiency, resulting in safer operation and profitability while decreasing the in incidents normally looked upon as routine for the number of moving parts that take place each day. She and her team have helped to make the Pigeon River the number one rafted river in the entire country. the director takes pleasure in commending Ms. Jan Brooks for exceptionally noteworthy performance of duty while serving the citizens of Cock County 
Two thoughtful leadership, sound counsel, spirit, and cooperation from 25 March 2019 to 18 March 2024. During this period, Ms. Brooks has performed in an exemplary manner consistently going well above and far beyond the call of duty. Called upon to serve as a medical liaison to the director, a position created after her value was realized as a member of the COVID-19 task force, anything thrown her way has always been handled with swift and professional results. Ms. Brooks is a fire and forget weapon system, a force of nature not to be messed with. Yeah, she says that. <laughs> First time I ever met her, she scared the hell out of me. <laughs> she will roll up her sleeves and execute any task that furthers the mission at hand, whether it's the purchase of funnel for fire trucks to refuel or to recall the trauma team and clear a health pad during an active shooting. One phone call is all it ever it is ever taken to be exactly where we needed to be. Blessed with a true servant heart, she gives more than she receives and loves more than we do. <coughs>
Um, we have a, it's starting at 10, I'm oh, sorry, at noon, going till 10 p.m. Um, we have storyteller, Lou Bolton, who has written several books and has received a whole lot of awards. He's going to tell mountain stories. We have um, Todd Wright, who is a very well-known musician. He's known for vintage instruments, and he's going to <laughs> talk about the Hammerdale story and how to originate it, and he'll also be playing. And he'll have other instruments throughout the day that he will demonstrate. Um, we have Boomertown Gap Old Time String Band. I don't know if you all know about them, but um, almost all these people are on Facebook. If you want to look up their site and hear what they sound like, see what they look like. Boomertown Gap goes to schools all around East Tennessee and talks about native music, Appalachian music specifically. And they play Appalachian instruments and they will tell stories about the songs that they're going to do and the instruments are different. One of them plays spoons, one plays banjo, um, and they'll be a fiddle player too. So they're really great, high energy, and local. And um, then we have the uh, orders of Anahidua, Cherokee dancers, drummers, and storytellers. They're nationally known. They are on the Smithsonian Register. They play, they do their performances all over the world. We're just really lucky to have them. One of the members is a three-time national hip dancer winner, and that's the whole country. And he told me that hip dancing isn't even native to the Cherokee, but they started doing it because they had so many people wanting to hire them, and they were asking for that. But they will tell stories about the dances that they do, um, and where the stories came from, and how the dances originated, and there will also be audience participation. They love to get people up and they'll, they'll teach you a dance. And it's going to be fun. It's really going to be fun. And then we have um, Andrea Kukulirati with her Fuego band. Andrea is um, a master guitarist. She is from Peru. She fled to Argentina, lived in Argentina for about 10 years, left her family then moved to the United States about 15 years ago. She lives in Knoxville, and she plays all over the United States. She was recently um, asked to hear Ryman in Nashville, which if you're a musician or you love music, that's a big deal. It's a really big deal. But she's very uh, energetic. She speaks five languages, and she'll be doing uh, Brazilian music, Spanish music, Latino music, and she'll be doing several songs in French, as well as Italian. And she plays guitar like Django Reinhardt, if any of you are familiar with Django. She does some of his songs, and I can't even see where her fingers are going. She's great, and she'll have four, four more members with her. They'll have a five-piece band for our show. And then we have Robinella. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Robinella, but she's been around a long time in this area. She also had a, a hit song out that was actually on a TV and was nominated for a Grammy. She writes, she plays guitar, she sings, and she'll have her band with her as well. Um, she used to be a part of Rosanella and the CC String Band. When she and her firm, former husband split up, her band just became Rosanella, and he started the Black Lilies, which was very well known. He's, he's won Grammys, he's been on all kinds of shows, and um, if you look at our our website, which is roots2theriver.com. You can see all the performers that are going to be coming, and there's a bio about each group and each performer. Um, the, last, the last one, of course, is Cruz Contreras. He'll be coming on at 8.30. We'll, later on on our website, we will put the times of each performance so everybody will know. It's family friendly. It's free. We've got five, I believe, five food trucks coming, and um, it will be behind City Hall. And we'll have some things for everybody to do all around. And we're hoping that um, everyone will come. Get, spread the information if you can. We're still looking for sponsors, and we're still, we really need volunteers. 
So the Forage Club would be great if we could get you guys involved or anybody here. Um, if you have any questions, my name is and phone numbers on the first page. Um, under here, you'll see that we have partnered with the City of Newport, Hawk County Parks and Recreation, and we're sponsored by the Tennessee Arts Commission, the Thriving Arts Co-op, Clean Water Expected in East Tennessee, Old Smoky Distillery, Duncan and Greer Center, and if, if you don't know, they're the group that cleaned up that whole block in downtown Newport, where all the shops are now, and it looks great, I think. We've also got sponsorship from South Signs and Design and Logic Marketing slash Brainshop. Brainshop just moved to Newport, I think about four months ago. I don't know if anybody knows anything about this. Yes, that's great. Right. And you come to us tonight. Uh, are you you're requesting uh, sponsors from the county? Is that the reason you're here? Well, um, that would be great. But the reason I'm here more, more than anything is to just tell you all about it and try to get community involved. Okay. But, right. but we would love it. We would love to have another sponsor. Well, that, that's how it was written up on the agenda. That's okay. the reason I'm asking. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Uh, well, that will have to come before the Finance Committee. I'm assuming that at their next meeting, uh, it needs to come before them. So uh, if you if you want to discuss it, then uh, you can bring it before us. Then that's okay. And would anybody um, like one of these? It's a packet. It has our sponsorship information, our press release, which we've we've updated since we've gotten some more sponsors. Does all the members have one? Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, that way anybody, anybody in the, in the uh, here tonight can pick one up. Okay, and, it, and uh, Rob also, I'm oh, sorry, sure Mary Mathis, uh, emailed this to all of you all, yeah. too. You should have it here. You know, right. well, I just thought it'd be easier to have something. I don't know if I've taken too much time or not, but um, <laughs> does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Dean and Matter of Dana uh, addressing the board. The only person in the room that you guys have Katie's vote, so no one can pronounce my last name. So, probably just a candy bill. Maybe, yeah, I don't want to just put an extra, extra letter. So, uh, I feel a bit redundant now. You know, so because uh, I'm here to talk about uh, an economic development board which brought up, because last month, uh, one of you guys brought up the county-owned property on the corner of 411, and that you guys wanted to know, if like you wanted to sell it to a developer, you guys wanted control of which developer went into that area, and had them sign a contract to promise to develop that area. So that's why I'm here, is to talk about things like that. Like, wouldn't it be great if you guys had more control over which developers came to the county and where? For years, we've had the partnership kind of secure the economic development, and I feel like everyone in the county's going to be left in the dark because they operate as a nonprofit, which means they're not held accountable to any open records laws. And as we've seen talking about velocity in that development, you know, all we get is stonewalled and hit with, we've seen no plans, we've signed no documents. So, as we're coming up on the new fiscal year in June, it would be nice to see. You know, with the mass influx of people, the mass, uh, you know, new growth, and the coming in of zoning, having a real economic development board, and maybe it's time to move away from the partnership, and having elected officials on a board that are held accountable to, you know, the public knowing what's going on, the CLB knowing and voting on what goes where, and having an actual vision of what you want the county to look like. It's on the partnership's website. It says, our goal is to create a successful community through a shared vision of the future. Do you know what their vision of the future is for the county? Because I don't. And anytime we try to talk to them or try to find out developments that could be coming to our area, we don't hear anything. Even when we file the Tennessee Open Records laws with the partnership, we get letters back saying we don't have to tell you anything because we operate as a 501c nonprofit. So I think it's time <coughs> to go forward and you have a real economic development board that they have to 
hold up to the, at least the basic seven steps of development, which is designate an area to develop, hire a land use developer, <coughs> put out requests for proposals, take in bids from other, other developers, developers that are vetted, that you're going to ensure that development is going to happen. And you're not going to lose out on development and jobs or have things halfway built and then they're going to lose investors because you have people banking on you know, developers that want to come in and do a grand resort that kind of is gambling with your number one income, which is the rafting. You know, opening that door to have them come in and kind of mess with that. That's your number one source of income for county behind property taxes. Why would you want to gamble that and not include them in any future developments? You know, you have the drawings that came up that Velocity was using to gain private investor money that was paid for by state grants. Like, that's known, that's proven. You know, and it says that that drawing was for a redesign of Hartford. Why was no one involved? Why was not one rafting company approached and said, hey, you know, we want to redesign this area. We want to build this up, you know, and you guys built it up so far. Let's take it to the next step. That hasn't been done yet. So it would be nice to have, you know, things looked into as far as uh, the budget goes with that. Let's see, the partnership was given $263,690 last year. You know, um, and then tourism, $122,586,000, totaling $386,276. Do you guys get an account of how that's spent? Do you know how much goes to what? Because we don't get any information. We're, you know, we file for open records. We don't get any. We don't get to know where our money goes. So it would be nice to have a real board to know where your money's going, to know what's coming, what what things could be coming. You know, people have said to me, "Oh, well, that's government overreach." You know, to involve the public, but that's <coughs> what the government's here for: is to help the public and, and grow. So, just moving forward, be nice, you know, I know McMahon, you made a, a motion to look into, you know, moving towards, and that's, that's why I said I feel a little bit redundant, but that's, you know, that's the direction I think that the county needs to go in. Um, beyond that, let's see, uh, the economic development plan, a new economic development plan was dropped March 13th by the partnership. I haven't, I don't even know where it's been dropped, but I was told it was dropped. But there's a public comment that ends March 27th. That's not even 30 days. And where is that information? Where is that economic development plan? So can we make a motion to extend that public comment for that until the next meeting? So the public can actually see the new economic development plan? Like make it available to people? <laughs> I'm asking you guys. I feel like everyone's just staring at me like a deer in headlights. Um, can we get a 30 day extension on this public comment for the new economic development plan? Bueller? <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, Mr. Chairman, that the, that the six districts speaks out on this issue. The people's asking to be heard. I mean, uh, uh, she's just asking us to hear, uh, to extend this to where they can maybe get information, we can have more information. I mean, what's it going to hurt? What's, what's it going to hurt for us to extend it and give them, give them 30 more days? That's the sixth district speaking. I mean, because that kind of cuts us off. I mean, it was just dropped a week ago. I mean, no one's seen this. No one's been able to come and have public comment. This is the only forum for public comment in the county. The sixth district will make a motion that we give her. It's not on the agenda. We'll have to suspend the rules. We have to suspend the rules. I'll make a motion to speak. Okay, we have a second for Mr. Esslinger. We have a motion uh, for Mr. Vassar, a second for Mr. Esslinger to suspend the rules. Um, any questions? Roll call, please. Amy Ford? Uh, yes. Bill Miller? Yes. Caleb Glazer? Yes. Jason McMahon? Yes. Lawrence Smith? Yes. Tracy Stepp? Yes. Jonathan Kimplin? Yes. Jeff Esslinger? Yes. Dan 
I'm sorry. How much do you guys want to elaborate on the record tonight? Well, I'm sorry. We want to keep you all involved as much as possible. We want you all to know. We want you all to know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, we want that, and and you know. We, guys, we, we have a lot of really, really exciting stuff going on in this county that we try to share with everybody. We really do. I've tried to make an annual report as, as detailed as possible. For you all to read through it, if you have any questions, you come back to us with. You know, we, we want to include you all. We think we have a great CLB. We're very appreciative of the work that everybody does. We just want to try to get on the same page, and I'm willing to do that, and so is Mr. Grant. If you want to go to breakfast, I'll take you and buy you breakfast. If you want to come to an open meeting, just do it. Whatever you would prefer to do, you know, our door and our meetings are always open. I just want to make that clear for everyone, every one of you. I want to make that clear. So. Anything else? Anything else at this place? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, sir. <laughs>